Hello everybody, this is Stephen Allison and this is The Warm Down. Today's episode is with Paul from Redmen TV uh, and as usual it is sponsored by the One Football app. I am sure you know all about it by now but in case you don't, hit the description below, get it downloaded, get the alerts turned on. You've got all of your football news from around the world in here. Get it on alerts so you find out what's happening, especially these next few days where there's transfers going to be popping off every single day that you need to be finding out about. There's news from around the world, there's transfer news, like you can scroll through all of these, they give you the source, they give you their rating on how much they think it's going to happen. Gareth Bale to Manchester United is a rumour in here, but Don Ballon is a source. So it, you, it lets you be able to make your own judgement, Don Ballon not being the greatest source in the world. You can see all the stats from previous matches, you can see all of the stuff that Opta have got on there, you can see the fixtures, you can see the results, you can see everything. Basically, it's all-encompassing football app, you definitely need to be getting it. The link is in the description below. Um, definitely go and check it out. So this episode, we tried to do like a, a bit of a stream, so the graphics was on the screen and all that rest of that sort of stuff. I thought it would make it quicker in the, ed in the edit, but I think... Something went wrong that we didn't notice. We carried on for about 20 minutes while it wasn't recording. I then tried to restart it. I restarted it and it, it failed again. So we ultimately got like about an hour or so, but there's a couple of places where things are missing a little bit. But um, it's an excellent chat with Paul. Paul's a top bloke, despite the fact that he's a Liverpool fan. So go check it out. If you are a Liverpool fan, if you're one of the neutrals that locks on here and you, you've not heard of the Red Men, then definitely go check him out. But check out all the stuff that he's doing on Ball Street. He's also got his own channel as well with all his own stuff on there. So whether you're a Red or a Liverpool fan or whatever, then go and check out Paul's stuff because it's excellent as well. Check it out. Hello everybody, welcome to another edition of the Warm Down. You might notice the surroundings are a little bit different, that's because today I've been in Liverpool with Paul, with Ball Street, with the guys from Redmen TV, the guys from Toffee TV as well, was here just a second ago. Go check them out if you're that way inclined. I know we're getting a few more neutrals on the channel now, and that's because we have good, sensible football chats where we sit down and talk to people without going fucking nuts at each other. How are you doing, Paul? Anyway, <laughs> no, Paul from Redmen yeah. TV, everybody. Yeah, uh, yeah, I'm good, I'm good. Uh, it's amazing, isn't it, that fans from other backgrounds and cultures and football clubs can have reasoned discussion. You wouldn't think that was possible if you'd only consumed football via the internet. Or Twitter. Pre predominantly Pre Twitter. Pre Twitter's Pre what I was Twitter. driving up, but I mean, you know, YouTube comments is a bit it's of an quality, extension of that. YouTube cetera. comments can be, yeah, but I think, you know, there's, there's becoming more and more of a thing where people are actually using their own names. Um, there's also more thing where people are using like all of the football Twitter style of, of stuff like that and that's always going to breed a certain type of mentality in that but I think people are finding those that are behind some of these accounts aren't they and actually they're, they're all teenagers they're all at school well we, we ran a test and it was we were doing a, a new show on Red Men I, I can't remember what the specific oh it was probably like we were talking about Istanbul shock um, and we said like how like how old were you in, in 2005 and I knew what I knew what the the demographic was going to skew towards ten, but exactly like it, it was the vast majority of the people who were watching our, our live show were basically between the age of five and ten in, in, in twelve years ago, and uh, and I was like, I was like shit, but that's what you realise is when you see, when you get when you're getting like wound up by people, a lot of people on the internet and stuff, you realise that. Think about what what a dickhead you were at age fifteen or sixteen. I'm so glad the internet didn't exist to the level it is now. Cause it existed, but there was a lot of effort to go into write a message to somebody. Exactly. Like we we, we used to, you maybe go into like a, a chat room and, and and try and get booted out <laughs> or whatever for a laugh. But that was only like later. That was later. That you know, I still like probably like I'm probably too old to be doing that to be honest at the time. But but that was the thing. You you know, now you've got access to proper people and all that kind of stuff, haven't you? You know what I mean? I remember so. MySpace when it kicked off as a first sort of social network, but then that was fairly friendly. Really. Really. I don't remember ever being like yeah because it was just your, your mates on it wasn't there you'd maybe follow a couple of porn stars and that would be as exciting as MySpace got the most exciting thing was picking your glitter, song your glitter you so could have your glitter you stuff coming down from the top okay, I'm not sure about that but the uh, <laughs> but you know what what got page got, on, like, but, uh, we actually did a, a video that I don't think we ever released on Full Time Devils where Chris uh, producer Chris went through and tried to find old footballers MySpace pages and we got like 11 year old Deli Alley we got it, it was absolute brilliant stuff we had like Rojo and Romero and 
there was because people have just forgot MySpace even existed, so it was all there for in all its glory. I went through. It's all public as well, actually, wasn't it? Yeah. yeah, I went through a number of years ago and deleted a lot of stuff off that. Yeah, I'm not on MySpace no more either. That got deleted. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so there probably is some stuff on me on MySpace somewhere if someone was ever that asked. Like, but uh, all the stuff that's on there is probably on me fi- on Facebook or on Google at this point. Oh, anyway, mate, like, my well. time hop. Um, you realise how much of a genius you are and how bad your spelling is. Every time that time hop comes up, there's some sh- <laughs> funny shit that I'm, I say, but I'm so glad. That it's not public. <laughs> I have. Just, I think there's certain expressions that you could, that were funny in amongst your mates ten years ago that can't be public. So every time something comes back on on this day on Facebook, uh, and I go, no, nope, that gets deleted. <laughs> I, you know, but this is a thing. But it's, it's not, not enough, like horrendously bad. I'm not Andre Gray, like, um, no, but it's you just know, like, it's, or Donald Trump. But it's like, <laughs> but this stuff when you think like that. This, yeah, that was me being it. That was me ten years ago being an absolute idiot. So yeah, yeah I'm so something. glad. I mean. I was 12 in like 95, 96, so what would I have been saying? I have, I have no idea. So yeah, so I, 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 I understand why, but it gave me a fresh understanding into why football, social media is what it is, because we, we, we made this about Liverpool, is because it might be, it'll be slightly different for, for Man United, of course, because you've had a lot more, your success is more recent than ours, and and, and a greater over the last, you know, whatever, decade or plus. But there's a lot of people here who, who kids who, if, Istanbul was like yesterday to me. You know, I was in my prime. You know, I was out. I was out. I was blind. We were drinking all day. We loved it. It was one of those defining moments of me, of me, of me life. In me, I was in my early twenties, so it doesn't. You're know, the same. How old are you know? I'm thirty four. Well, yeah, I'm, I'm thirty three. I'm thirty four in December, so we're the same age. So yeah. It's... So, uh, but it, so it, it was not. You know, we're all still. I'm still either seventeen or twenty one in my head. Yeah. You know, I don't exactly. feel the age. I feel the age so I am. Go, so, sir, I go. <laughs> yeah. no, 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 no. It's mate. Uh, but yeah, but it, you know, so I don't. Istanbul feels like it's, it's part of my life. It doesn't feel like twelve years ago to me. Whereas it's it is twelve years ago. So if you're eighteen, it was six. You were six, and it, or, you know. So all of a sudden, you get football, when people when Arsenal fans and United fans, you're getting into banter rival banter rivalry on the, online, and everyone's telling you Liverpool is shit. You probably start to believe it if you only exist online and you've got well, to live on recent years of Liverpool. Whereas I I I. I I get to shrug it all off because I've seen Liverpool win stuff with my own eyes. You know what I mean? So it doesn't bother me, but you can see why kids get dead wound up on the internet about fucking. They take it to another level, though, don't they? It's just mm. got it's zero to ten really fast. Uh, it's, it's, a, you know it's a fascinating topic we'll get into today. Yeah, yeah. But do you know what? I, I actually miss those more. Obviously, we, we're now heavily involved in dealing with what's going on in fan culture and all the rest of that sort of stuff. I I do miss the times when. I would get my transfer news in the MEN when it was a respectable newspaper. You used to get the closest, and you, your rumours would come from Club Call, uh, which was on Teletext, and you, you know you might get a two like Liverpool in in Serie A raid, and you're like, ooh, and you can speculate who <laughs> that was, and it was no one because it was made up, uh, but you didn't care. It was enough. To, it was enough to you know, sustain. I didn't you. get to go to the 1992 Rumbelows Cup final. Because I ran up an eighty-eight quid phone bill on my mum's phone, uh, phony club call. <laughs> <laughs> so my punishment was that I didn't go go. Yeah, what's funny you mentioned the Rumbelows Cup because I actually <laughs> asked this question when the when the Carabao Cup draw was done the, yeah, uh, what last do you week, it as? and I said I had to get another test was, of age. That- I said. Can anyone tell me what Rumbelows is? And it was like one fellow was like, I don't. Know. It, it was like curries. It was like it was like curries. It was just like curries. It was a shit of it. It was like curries and comets. And then in five years' time, I'm gonna to have to go. Who remembers? Com- right, we're back. Uh, we just had that. the most amazing and in-depth chat. Joe, you know it was insightful. It was fun. We were talking about culture, young lads nowadays and lasses nowadays. Where are they consuming football? Where are they watching it? And we were saying like. How, are we losing something from how old people are now going to the game? We mentioned that you know, 20 years ago at the start of the Premier League, people's, the average age of season ticket holders was 23 years of age. Now it's 40s. It's a middle-aged guy. That's going to contribute to the atmosphere quieting yeah. down. And, but what, what are the young people doing? Well, this is it. I, I, as you say, I, I think there's a... There's an there's an unattainability again for regular tickets. You talked about how hard it is to get your to get your lad in week in week out, and you'd love to be able to take him. And he's dead interested in yeah. going as well. So Debating getting a season ticket, but I have to pay a full out price, and it's well, that's the thing for us. It's, too the, much, it's not even an option for us. The season ticket thing, you know, there's a there's how many tens of thousands of people on the season ticket wait list, which is closed at the moment at Liverpool anyway. Um, uh, you know, most people are on other people's season tickets, and that's the way that's the way it goes. You know, you get a season ticket by hook or by crook. And again, additionally, it's like the cops pretty much the cheapest, I think, in the ground, and that's still 
it's, it's probably around 800 quid. Mm. Um, 700 hours. You know, it, they, they, but they're there and about. Which is about where I'm happy to pay. Yeah. A little bit more than that. If it goes to 50 quid a game, I'm probably still going to go. I'm just going to moan about it a lot. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> but then you double, but then you, you, as you say, you're doubling up on that as well. And, and that's, that, uh, that's ridiculous. It's absolutely ridiculous. But the problem you've got as a result, I think, is you've got a young, uh, a young generation who... Again, and now watching games on the on the, the tablets and the devices, the learning about football. <laughs> Fuck's sake! <laughs> I'm gonna stitch what we've just done on there, so it's gonna be back in here as well. So um, one day it'll all make sense. Whatever, yeah. So we'll just go with it like this but, because it's cocked up. Yeah. So what we're, what we're kind of driving at is, is that you know you've, how people learn about football these days is they learn about it through screens, they learn about it from telly and the learn about it from youtube and, and, and social media and twitter rather than learn about it by being on the terraces with the dad and the granddad or going to the game and going to the pub before because everything about the culture's changed the days of going the game for going to the pub three hours before kickoff and you know you, your dad would have five pints and then probably drive the game and you know because it was allegedly a, i know exactly but it was a different world wasn't <laughs> it you know it was a completely different world and uh, and then you know you, you, you go because i my fondest memories of that going to anfield when i was six or seven years old and you know the the, the feeling of, of walking up to anfield and the, the goosebumps and all that stuff and then hearing the songs and the the, the, the chants on the terraces and hearing some the most abusive language you've ever heard directed at opposition players all the old that. man used to say is don't say that home. yeah, yeah. <laughs> but this, uh, but now, uh, and this is the thing, and this is why, obviously, like fan TV's become a massive part of football culture, and why it will have a place, and it will always have a place, and it'll have an increasingly big place. But why I think there's a responsibility for us in doing that is about how we portray what's going on, because there's a, there's going to be a generation of people who, who think that it's it, it, how you react to football is extremes. You lose a football match, you should never be melting down. After losing well, any of your first ten games of the fucking, or let's use the first ten back to back, you know, these games don't matter. But you're trained to think they all matter. Have unless... I ever had a meltdown after a game? Someone tell me, because I don't think I ever have. Nah, I don't know. I don't. I don't, I don't watch it. I don't think I, I don't think I have. No. I, I, I see my ass with some things, and I, I've seen my ass with various different topics at the club. But normally, a performance. I, I don't think I have a meltdown. Mm. I, I try and be analytical in everything because I think it's it's got to be about the football. Like we mentioned earlier on on, on Ball Street, go and check those videos out. So we've done a few today um, about the the constant narrative with Arsenal fan TV is it's just Wenger. That's all they want to talk about. When was the last time you heard them talk about the football? Yeah, it, it, look, I, like I say, I don't want to I don't want to dig Arsenal fan TV out too much because I, I think they're a product of the, the what's going on at that football club to, to some extent. Undoubtedly like, frustrating. Ex exactly. But I, randomly enough, I was because I, I did a video with them yesterday um, uh, after or the day after the match, and um, I wanted to see how, how, how what it was doing, what the comments were, and whatever. And I saw on the channel like the, the most popular videos, and like troops in like three of the top two or two or three of the top ten, and they've got Wenger in the title like he's extinct. Was like six months ago or nine months ago or something, and that's the thing. He right, it, it just self, it keeps repeating itself. But the thing for me is that, is that there's got to be a balance. There's nothing wrong with having those opinions, provided you're presenting the other the other side of things. And there's a the problem is, is football Twitter doesn't like shades of grey. <laughs> no, it's it's, it's got to be absolute. It likes in or out. It likes yes or no. It likes hate or love. Yeah, this guy's a flop or he's he's not fraud. Or genius, you know, you're not just a good, decent football manager. Pep or there's, Mourinho. Well, no, but there's a great, there's a, there's a great, there's a great, uh, um, like geek podcast I listen to called The Weekly Planet, and they have this thing about the, 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 when they talk about the new Star Wars film coming out, and they were saying, what if it's just a movie? You know, like it doesn't have to be the worst thing that's ever made. Or this, like, oh my god, is this messianic style? You know, Star Wars is fixed forever. What if it's just a film? What if it's just seven out of ten? But extremes is where entertainment lies. Yeah, and extremes yeah. is where you, you see it in comic book movies. You see guys that can fly. No one's making videos or films about guys that have normal jobs and stuff. It's always the extraordinary. That's where the story arcs yeah, are, isn't yeah. it? And that's ultimately where we find narratives on. You but, want to see someone that said something yeah. outlandish and then be proved wrong. But this is right. where but this is where it's gone. This is where football's become this become theatre, it's become pantomime because they, again they have to Sky have to build it up. Fucking ITV have to build it up because they've got they've got to sell the excitement of England. 
good luck with that. Um, but then, and then of course like, that filters onto the next thing and the next thing, and you've now got like obviously like clickbait culture online that they go mainstream media now desperately trying to get people over this. So they've got to get people riled up and get opinions flying when they shouldn't. It's like um, halfway through the Chelsea game, first game of the season, they're what like three now, three down to Burnley or something, and the commentators are going. I mean, could this lead to people calling for? Could this be? Could Conte go by the end of this game? It's like he literally won the league title less than it's been. It's been. They less were than ironing on the goal it's, patches today. It's literally <laughs> been less than ninety minutes of football since they won the the, the Premier League. But they've got a point there with the, with Abramovich that that's you know not out of the realm of possibility. But the problem is, is that it's all filters down. It's all a train and a new generation of football fans to talk about football. There's, we used to, you know, you get the you, you get the pub because this is the thing. I remember going to a game and there was a fella sat behind with my dad's seat. So it's, it's kind of irrelevant that he was brummy because it's not about him not being from Liverpool. It was more that his accent was it was very brummy and it was very like, Ur. and um, he was just he was just kicking off. He was, he was bollocking a player, a couple of players all game long, and he was with us. He brought his girlfriend and she obviously had no interest in being there, but that's clearly who he watches footy with at home, and she and he and. She's the captive audience, so he shouts stuff at the screen, and she, she just thinks that's clearly how, how it's done or whatever. So he's taken his football couch viewing experience and brought it into the ground, and this because that's where you get loads of fucking. I don't think there's no problem if someone misses a shot and you go, oh, that's a natural reaction. But when someone has a good go and you miss it, you go, oh, good effort, keep going. Now it's just full of fucking minge bags who fucking shout at the screen all night long, that, really. and then come in and fucking start kicking off about. Fucking, I mean, probably because you sit in a decent area, the ground, like, <laughs> I mean, which I do too. But you still get it. Like people do, people don't know how to behave at football anymore because they've learned how to behave by being sat on the, the own, watching the fucking footy on the on the telly, rather than seeing an old fella with them next to them at the ground, teaching them the songs and fucking how to when to clap and when not to clap and how to react and all that kind of stuff. I've never really thought about that, but yeah, there's there's moments when you're watching a game where the whole crowd will start clapping out of. Almost randomness. So there'll be a move a player does. So it's, it's normally you see it's someone doing. There was one that sticks out in my mind from this weekend against Leicester. There was a little triangle of players. Vardy was chasing it down. They knocked it out between the three of them and spread it away. And it's not a nice little, little, yeah. little, little switch of play. You know what I mean? Things like yeah, that. Little smart round of applause. Yeah. I would care. Uh, Chris, does red man when we got fucking crucified a couple of seasons ago because. Uh, I mean, for, for many reasons, because he's like that. But the, this one, we were play, we played Real Madrid. We've all Madrid. been clipped up. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> we, played, we played Real Madrid at, uh, at Anfield, and uh, they, 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 they just battered us. Absolutely battered us. And Cristiano Ronaldo was amazing. And he come off, and he, his seat was the, the row behind the dugout. And, it, and, and like, everyone stood up and, like, give him a little, like, you know, but like, Chris has got a recognisable. He, and he's there, and he got fucking dogs of because he's on the telly clapping a former Man United player coming off. He's just battered us. Because, again, if you did, everyone in Anfield was literally stood up going, listen, fair play, what a, what a performance, what a player. But that that culture of that's, a, that's an in the ground experience. That's and not. That gets taken to Twitter. And, and he gets the Twitter treatment. He just looks like some fucking knobhead. Some kind of knobhead who's betrayed Liverpool for clapping a, a rival player. But that's. Does that's, that happened often at Anfield? The, the clapping of the opposition the, player. It's happened once. At all I've seen it in my my lifetime going the game. I've seen it a handful of times, and it's genuinely like if you see a, a goal that's like mind blowingly good, and you you, you, know, you can't help but go fair fair fucks. What a, what a goal! And every now and again, you might get a performance that's just. Out of this world that you do, but I wouldn't say it happens every fucking week. Though. Original Ronaldo knocked us out of the Champions League with a hat trick in 2003, and the whole ground gave him a standing ovation as he was subbed off. Yeah, and it was it was weird, but it was the right thing to do. But I, I guess if you uh, I, can you compose a tweet, if you did like the little clapping emoji, well done. Yeah, oh, you put a, what what a performance by so so what a great player. yeah. But you're verbalising what you're actually doing with actions, and essentially that's it. But you would get crucified. Fucking crucified because again, this is the thing. These are the things that don't translate through your laptop screen and through your through your telly, unfortunately, because they're not it's just not part and parcel of the televised game. It's not you can't because you have to tell people what's happening. It's not the same as being there and experiencing it. So yeah, there's there, it's another one of those little things that gets lost, which is a, which is a massive shame. Which again, all feeds into the fact why football Twitter is just basically a gang of bell ends, like. It's like it's, it's going to be like I, I put it through the, through the week because I've, I've seen a few really good people go off Twitter and delete their accounts and stuff because it's just it's insufferable for Liverpool. It's been terrible this summer. 
Um, because now there's a group of people who are questioning the ownership and I see why you would have questions because I think some of it's a bit circumstantial. I think some of it's a bit, you get a bit unlucky and certain things, some things don't work out and things have been mismanaged and blah, blah, blah. But I don't think it's as much a case to be answered as some people would have you believe. But as a result, it's just led to it being a very toxic place. And the problem is, is that when you start, when things are, when you lose your game football, when we didn't, we just lose to fucking Watford. With a last minute like offside goal, which is uh, that that should be the annoyance. The referees fucking let a goal go, but it's not. It becomes a uh, everyone kicking off about Liverpool, and then in the in the wake of that, sensible. No one wants to hear sensible analysis. Everyone wants to hear it's fucked. You don't want to hear oh, on another day. But I know you guys at Redmen, and as much as we can banter each other off with the fact that we are fucking totally rivals, the sworn enemies. I, I appreciate the, the style of content and the way you conduct yourselves and, and the way that the channel conducts itself because it does try to, to analyse football, it does try to, to, to do fan culture. If you're not wearing it, we, we've just done a video of you wearing a shirt where Redman has sponsored uh, FC Liverpool. Like, yeah. I, I appreciate all of that stuff that you add to the culture of the fans and, and I know fan TV has this bad name because a, a lot of it is down to what happened with the... Football Twitter really took Arsenal fan TV's meltdowns to heart, and it's become their favourite ever thing. Well, it's all we've all, all the three big channels have had one at one point or another. So it was, it, you know, it was the original fellow you had called. It was Chris doing the the, the Rent Boys thing, you and it was, Andy and you've had Andy, you've had Andy and stuff. And, and and the problem is that in another world, they they never, they they die and no one thinks about them anymore. But of course, these these things live here forever, don't they? It is that football catching up. It, it's it's a, it's a strange world, isn't it? And people, unfortunately, that's the stuff that catches fire because that's the same reason why TalkSport exists and why the and, be, and even like fat, uh, 909 phone in, which yeah. should be should be more bound, still promote when someone comes in and goes, the manager's got to go after four games because, well, right, look right. at this, you know, exactly, look at this guy, oh, and get, they're still pushing all that stuff. It's exactly the same stuff. Um, but, you know, there's, there's got to be, um, it, it annoys me that that's what gets talked about. I had this. I was at a. I was speaking at a conference in Wembley probably a year and a half ago. I was on a panel about the fan TV and the culture of uh, and fan engagement and all that. And a guy who runs Southampton social media. A good question. Yeah, go for it. And he says, "Well, Arsenal fan TV. What are your thoughts? Because it's all just people kicking off left, right, and centre." And I said, "Listen, it's not. Do you know how, how many videos Arsenal fan TV put out on a weekend? They put like twenty-five videos out for a match." And one of them might permeate its way into your timeline because it goes big, but you don't. You're not. You because ultimately no one cares because it's not funny or interesting. No one really cares to watch a guy going. Well, you know what? We we're unlucky on another day. We'll probably get a better result. And he, you know, he just needs time to bed in. Why would fans of other clubs watch that? There's nothing to be gained and, from and watching that. And that's where them views come from. Because there might be a core of Arsenal fans that watch Arsenal fan TV because they're putting relevant Arsenal content out but the the reason that they go viral is because of the opposition fan interest in the yeah, meltdown exactly I think we the good thing with Redmond's been okay so we we the, put in the, the, the Chelsea Rampers thing was the biggest mistake we ever made like and we got someone mentioned it we never really thought of that, about it as like, a, as like any homophobic connotation but when someone pointed out we were like right even if it what even if one person even thinks if that's, that's not the case, what you think it is then. exactly even if, if we if we get told someone thinks that's the case then fuck it there's no sense in it being up there get rid of it and of course it's it's the internet so it's stuck on a life of its own and it now exists in perpetuity in various other places and that the thing that I found good about about ours is that the ones that have gone big for us by and large have actually been pretty interesting stuff so we had a lad who it was the seventy seven pound ticket protest there was an Irish lad and he kept yeah, saying like a why would you pay seventy seven pound for that shit right, and all that kind of stuff? But that was for the, around a decent cause. There was a there was a local lad kicking off saying we'd become a tourist club, and it and some people took that as offensive. People coming in from outside, but it was more about him as a local lad and his feelings of frustration not being able to get into the ground and the, the not enough local lads being able to vocalise the support and stuff. And that went not as not. It's never going to go as big. Unfortunately, it doesn't go as big as any of the characters of Arsenal or or Andy Tate just talking. But for us, that went really big, and it was nice to have videos go big for a for a good yeah. reason. Which for me showed me that there is there's definitely something to that that it can be used in the in the right way. We also it? had um, the old fellow that we have, Ray, uh, saying this is our bobbins, yeah. and uh, you know that was from the heart. This is a guy that watched the Busby Babes, and 
you know, a, a lot of people say oh, it's embarrassing. You're talking to match going fans. Yeah. We try we try and get a cross section. So we'll talk to Ray, eighty years old, got fifty odd years, sixty odd years of watching the, the, the lads week in week out. We talk to eight year olds because you know, all right, they've they've only experienced a few years, but their opinion's relevant. You know, yeah, exactly. We speak to a cross section of match going United support. I don't understand how people can say. That's embarrassing. That's embarrassing the club. But there's the thing. Every it's not embarrassing in and of itself. It's just that again, it's the culture that's sprung up online where everything's ammunition to beat other fans with, um, and that's the that's the problem with it. Is that people foresee? Someone said to me, I did a video. I did my my vlog of the Arsenal game, and I I, I again some of the Arsenal fan TV lads in it because you know like, like yourself, like you know we 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 speak with mates with, uh, around the community and what have you. And someone said to me, you shouldn't be gloating about this because it'll only come back to haunt you if they beat us in the future. And I was like, this is football. Mate, fuck off. Because it, that's the point. That is that is the game. You can, we're all complicit. You buy into the game and the game is such. You celebrate your wins. like the, Every win, you celebrate it to the fullest of your ability. In the knowledge that fair fucks to the people <laughs> on the other side because they're going to do exactly the same back to you when it's in reverse but I just think there's again there's maybe another generation or there's maybe just a, a generation who hasn't experienced it maybe don't get out the rooms enough unfortunately who missed that my three best mates and my, my, my three close mates the people I spent all the time with growing up from age 11 to 16, 17 Evertonians in the 90s when we couldn't get a fucking win against them and my life was horrendous and I got abuse constantly like, well, like you know just like intolerable intolerable we beat them we finally beat them and I got home and I rang their landlines <laughs> <laughs> and I and, and I, I waited for them to come and home. I waited for their mum and dad to pass the phone to them and I roared with laughter down the phone at them and then they hung up and I rang them back again and I, and I did I, and I hounded those three lads for like the th- two or three days afterwards because that's the fucking that's what you do you but, know but now that's like getting a thousand retweets and stuff but, and that's the problem is that there's all these characters online that don't know each other that's and it's that's the, the crazy thing because it's a phrase used a lot is that you wouldn't say that to someone's face and they, they wouldn't I mean we can have a, I, I'm going to take the piss out of you if we beat you and I fully expect it to come back to me if we don't that's the like I said that's the game but I'm not going to step the fucking line with some of these because I know that I'm seeing you at some point again in the future and that's what some people don't fucking get I, I remember starting it starting at uni and I moved away moved away from Liverpool and went to Sheffield and I you know lived my whole life in Liverpool at this, at this point and I remember going to like the first of like the, these freshers nights and it, it ended up, yeah. yeah well, yeah. <laughs> I, I ended up, I ended up. But we, we go into in the bog, and the bog had a massive, big, open space in the middle of it. And there ended up being like twenty lads in there just talking footy. It was random as fuck. And it, but that was what it, it was like. Lads from all over the country, all who had footy in, in common. And there was you know man lads, and there was like lads from Leeds, there was lads from all over the place. And that was the thing that really opened my eyes to all of it. Is that again, people don't get this because. If you if your football experience exists totally online, these aren't real people. And the fans of other clubs aren't real people. And they don't. You can't understand that they experience the same things as yeah. Whereas the fo- football banter, really, realistically, only should be re- only genuinely exists in like half an hour leading up to and the, in the hours just leading after the game. Same with like Evertonians, you know. We and and, and with, with yourselves, the, the the stuff in the match is horrible and it's horrendous and it probably goes too far. But by and large, maybe the Scouse Mag thing is, the, is an exception to this to some extent, like because we just ain't used genetically, I think, <laughs> I think that's it, and vice versa. Um, but the, you know, like I, I told you, get on. There's, there's people who would sing and say some horrible stuff inside the confines of a football match. And they get a lift home. Exactly. You know what I mean? And they never <laughs> mention to your face, and they never would. And that's just the way. That's just the way it is. But that's the that's the nature of, of nature of footy, isn't it? That's what fucking love as far as well, isn't it? Uh, what do you think? What do you think of your chances this season? At a half decent start, you would say. Yeah, more, the, more than half decent. The Watford result, obviously, one that sticks in. The Watford one, yeah, that that put a the fact that it was the first game as well, and I think it, it, there's been a, a pervading sense of negativity around transfers and what have you, leading to that as well. Although you know, the next twenty four hours all, could be mental. It all seems to be kicking off positively for the at the moment, but um, again, yeah, we we do. We drew, we drew, we scored three goals against a team that last season we needed an overhead kick goal of the season for memory chance to beat, and we scored three goals against them, and then we conceded two. One of them was questionably offside, another one was deaf offside with a random freak one where it's Wine Album's head and it's Minnelli's arm and it's the bar and goes in. You know, 
99 times out of 100 that goes anywhere but the back of the net so that was but that, that a negative and then qualifying for the Champions League which was massive for us of course and then you know we got out that against Palace another team that struggled having made changes which was great for us snotted Poffenheim in the second leg which just absolutely annihilated Arsenal um, so things are good things are really good and I, I I've placed no expectations on our season at all in terms of what like winning stuff if we win something party time it's like you know if we manage to put a sustained run together which if we get a few more points it might be possible I don't know but uh, if we do great but what we what we just I just want us to do is is not fucking embarrass ourselves this year Liverpool need to get out of the habit of being a bit of a fucking laughing stock but you you've in recent years you've sort of had title runs you've had times where you've steamed into the Champions League you've finished in the top three and then it, it it comes crashing down once you end up trying to fight on multiple fronts again, which is still potentially. Yeah, yeah, I yeah. think that's going to be your downfall this yeah. season. I think you should probably prioritise. But I know that Liverpool have got a love of European nights the same way we do. You ain't going to phone, phone the Champions League in. Yeah. Are you going to phone the league in? Are you going to try and fight on both fronts? Yeah. I think. I think unless the, you get a significant number of signings, you're going to struggle. Maybe I think the thing that might favour all the Champions League teams because there's so many of us this year is. Because all the teams that are going to be fighting out for that top four, with the exception of Arsenal, <laughs> uh, and in the Champions League, uh, and even then they're going to have a face to face the struggle of, of the Europa. So inevitably, there's not a situation like there was last year where you had Liverpool and Chelsea out of it, or 30 40 where Liverpool came yeah, from seventh. Or, you know, and uh, Leicester as well, they, they won the league with, with no other thing to concentrate I, on. I, I, I no mean, coincidence there. If Everton got in like an amazing centre forward, they could maybe shock a few but people. They've got the nightmare in Europa as well. Exactly. So it's it's not, I think, what will. There will be the rotation issues and there'll be the issues, but I think everyone's going to have them. So what you'll probably find is. Every all us use Chelsea City all have. Maybe you're going to trade off a good performance what in the in Champions League one week and then a struggle in the league and then you'll have and it'll flip the week after and I think it should mean that all those teams stay Roughly. exactly and it'll only be if someone doesn't get out the group. It might you know it, it, someone might have to prioritise around Feb. Like Spurs. Like Spurs as an example. Because I, I could imagine seeing them sitting there with their head on the desk but as that I, game but, through. Know, but I, I, but I could, <laughs> but this thing about Spurs, I could see them being fucked in general because the Wembley thing I think is going to be a, a, a massive problem but, for them either way. I didn't think of, I didn't consider this until two or three weeks ago, and I was trying to work out what what the reason behind stadium moves is why why do teams never take to a new stadium it's mad isn't it because you think sometimes it's new players playing in a you know what might be an old stadium where it's new to them but they're still managed to maintain this performance did you go to West Ham last season no I didn't go so I I, I went and, and I know the, that's a shit show right? well yeah well this is the thing and it's not it's not all like this but this is the worst case example of it but there's a video on my on my channel just fucking mad because you get to see it like inside and we, we got West Ham tickets for it and got in there and had to keep our cops shut which is hilarious but the just it was just a free for all. So like I think what they what I, I spoke with to Flavius Bears fan from Boston and he was saying what they've done with to, from White Hart Lane to Wembley is they've largely moved people on mass. On so if you're behind the goal, you're behind the goal. If you're on the side, you boys West Ham just went come in and pick your seats. <laughs> so first come first serve. So it's like again if you imagine that at Old Trafford, imagine if you if did it alphabetically. <laughs> you know what I mean. You, you you know you you're, you're probably okay because you're in the first half of the alphabet, but if you're if you were you know if you were Zion Zionson or whatever you'd be fucking you know you'd be coming in and you want to be in the second end you'd have no chance because anyone who's on the list who fancies a go would just be like oh, yeah of course I'll have a go of course I'll have a go I'll try and try and have someone offers you a seat in the in the best seat in the in the house whether you're you're suitable for that seat or not you don't give a fuck you just want to go and sit there and watch the footy and that's where that's where West Ham are fucked in is all their top boys. Are all all over the place in, in the grass. Yeah, and no. as much as we like to think, get up and sing and all that lot, you can be really self conscious when there's you to stand up. You don't want to do it. Yeah. But when you've got people that have stood and sat around you for 5, 10, 15 years, there's we a, know yeah. there's this routine. There's, there's a, a fella sat next to me and we're like that. There's a, we're, we are in it together. We know that if one of us starts singing, the other one will back, back them up, if nothing else. And that gives you a little bit of comfort. Yeah, it's mega. I, I, I mo- recently moved. Um, when you get to a certain age, you're 20, like, I don't want to sit in my fucking bed anymore. I want to go and balloon and do the lads and all that lot. And I, I, I was in case stand on my own. And then a few years ago, I was like, I fucking look on it. It's not to me, Dad. It's mint. It's fucking solid. The earth shit in it. 
So I moved back to go and get with my dad uh, in Stratford End, which meant I had to leave where I was in Case Town. But I'd sat there since like 1997, and there was, there was an old Scouse bloke behind me, which you can imagine the shit. You, he might as well hand out business cards with his reasoning for being a fucking United player, <laughs> because he got asked every game. I was bored of listening to people ask him, and the reason was he was um, he his dad was a Manchester. He was, this is a guy in his 60s. His dad was a United fan. He's a United fan. But his dad moved to Liverpool for some job near the docks. He was brought up and went to school in Liverpool, so he's got that unfortunate accent. And uh, it's it's funny as fuck, especially when we play Liverpool. You'd hear him shout something, and then you'd see a couple of other people who was just in there for the day, like, what the fuck was that? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, but, uh, yeah it's, it's, right. I, it's funny enough. On a random, like, similar to that, though, I had uh, we were getting tickets to see you play Bayern Munich in the Champions League back in 2001. And it, we, 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 it was when I was in uni, I was working on this pub, and we rigged a raffle, we just thought, fucking go ahead, what's, what's the Champions League footy? So we went, and uh, I think he's true, that, that year it was, a shit, it was a shit game, but I had the most stressful day of my life in Manchester, literally, I, I had to borrow an England shirt, just a like, red England shirt, just a generic thing to fucking, <laughs> that, yeah, this fucking 66 fucking England shirt, which is just terrible, like, and, uh, and I, I, I had to put on like a posh accent order and pint to get my mate to do it, and then I had to get on the, the tram up, and it was just, you know, standing room only going up the ground and it was just full of Manx singing anti scout songs and I was just like, this is the worst, <laughs> the worst experience in my life. I could literally go and watch Liverpool lose at Old Stafford and probably have a better experience than being the only scout there in 70,000 70, yeah, people. I can the, uh, there's an experience about leaving Anfield as well and I parked near, is it a pub called Flatiron? Yeah. Right, which is cop end and like away from the ground in it. Now, where the police escort takes United fans out the Anfield Road end is like out this way and then down in it. And I parked over there and I'm like, oh, I need to get through there. So we was in the United Court and it's going this way. I was like, I need to go through there. So I tried to tell the copper to let me through the line and he was like, really? <laughs> and, Whatever. Yeah, go ahead, mate. <laughs> <laughs> and I popped through into that Terry Street that's along the, uh, the main stand side of Anfield. And there's just four and five groups of lads all the way, hands in the pants, just looking at me. Me, 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 me and Benny was a lot of little podcasts for him and I was like, fuck, you know, we fucked up here, haven't we? Just walk, just keep walking. And then he's getting down at the flat end, he's what, maybe five bars that are all spilled out in the middle of the road. And I'm thinking, I smell different. I definitely don't have the same accent. <laughs> like, you can see it in my eyes. And you're like, like, you know, I think Liverpool's probably a little bit more colour friendly, but United fans, this is about as colourful as I get going to a match. Like, I don't wear colours, I don't wear anything. And I was like, fuck, I had a grey audio or something. Like, what are we going to fucking do? And then there was a group of, like, 50, 60-year-old um, dudes with, like, the, the red and yellow scouts. So, obviously, they look for the thing. So, he's like, right, just go foot right behind them. So, we just go foot right behind them. We've got on our phones. Just walking behind them. And we were going through pubs and, like, like drove through the end pubs where they've all spilled out into the road and everything. Uh, and I think we just lost as well. And uh, we were just, like, just fucking keep going on. It's... Yeah, yeah it's, still, it's one of them, isn't it? It, it is. It's my... It's my People are like, hey, mate, you got the time? And you're like... Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> 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 yeah, yeah. But even at City, right? I speak the same language as them at, at the Etihad, right? And I come out the Etihad ones. Maybe it's the look on your face. So you don't realise you just lost. You probably have got a face like thunder a little bit. But I've got like a white t shirt on. I am as generic as possible. And so I'm walking across the road. And this is before I was doing full time doubles or something. I couldn't understand it now. I, I fucking really watch my back at the Etihad at the moment. But Jesus Christ, I, I'm no one. And I'm walking across the road, and some guy just goes, fucking Munich, cunt. And you're like, like Mate, what? <laughs> we're going to stick it on my back. <laughs> and you're like, <laughs> you just, you just, Is you he just randomly you, throwing you, it out? You were probably humming on the glory, glory <laughs> under your uh, under, under, under You're like, so. How the fuck is that? I mean, I know some city fans look like they've just fucking covered themselves in glue and rolled through the megastore, but you're like, <laughs> How the fuck has that come about? Like, yeah. I, I can understand it at Liverpool. Obviously, you speak totally different languages. That day as well, I had to collect my ticket um, from the cop end at 9 o'clock in the morning. And I was like, oh, It's going to be a bad one. Go to the lap. Ticket? <laughs> Hello, <laughs> jolly good show to be here for my first time at Anfield. Yes, long time red. Yeah, yeah. Just around. like when they, they hadn't sent my ticket out in time to a funny United ticket, I was like, "What the fuck am I going to do? You can collect it from Anfield if you want." I was like, "Are you fucking serious? <laughs> <laughs> Where, where's the ticket office at Anfield? It's the cop end, like." Amazing, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Can I can I wear a billboard saying I ate cop ends to walk down there? Like, yeah, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Jesus fucking Christ. 
What do you think your chances are this season then? And what would you consider success? So I, success is success. Success, yeah. I, look, success is winning a piece of silverware, isn't it? So when I say success, when I, for me, I want to. Say, I think bare minimum expectations to Liverpool should be the league is just getting back into the Champions League again because look, I've done a few videos of this on my channel. It, um, we wind Arsenal fans up, and um, but predominantly, it, uh, little secret. It's a bit jealousy, and it's also just to get a rise out of them. There's nothing wrong with finishing. There's, not, there's nothing wrong with like, Listen, if you, you strive, you shoot for the moon. If you finish second, third, or fourth, fuck it. You know what I mean? You, you get to go to the Champions League. It's great. But that's not, got to be a minimum, league, that's not a celebration. Exactly. Like I said earlier, yeah, it? it's not a celebration. It's not a celebration. It's um, it's about finding Liverpool's level again and making sure that that is our level. Well, all of a sudden, build. this is what people forget. You've got to build. You can't just go in and and uh, and from nowhere win the league and then dominate it for ten years. It's not going to happen. You've got to go in and you've got to build. You've yeah. got to use each season as progression. And do you feel like you're doing that? Yeah, absolutely. And that's the beauty of a year in Klopp is that we probably, if we won the Europa League, we'd have probably been, it probably would have come a year too soon for us being in the Champions League. I think we'd have been in massive trouble. Whereas that this the way this team plays now, they seem to be totally bought in and we've got the right players. I think the players are the footy now, which is great. But the, the thing with me is at the Champions League, because again, the last time we got in, we were 13-14, we ran, we ran it as close as we've ever run it in terms of the Premier League. We were fucking done in. We sold Suarez. We bought players who have come good since, but we're never going to be at that level. And we went, into, you know, we went into a season with Ricky Lambert, Fabio Berini, and Mario Balotelli as our striking options for fuck's sake. And then we got just annihilated in the Champions League, and it was embarrassing. Um, I don't want that to happen again. What's mad though when you see teams like that at the time? You're like. Do a job with this team, yeah, can't you? Yeah, absolutely, yeah. I remember like 2005, we had Jemba Jemba and Cleverson <laughs> and Richardson and, and Bellion and Alan Smith. We Smith, and you're like, Richardson. We can, you know, he's fighting this team, do you know what I mean? And then you look back at the, and then you look at the team that went on to win the Champions League, of course. Yeah, well, we, <laughs> I remember making a case for the team we put out the Bernabeu and we had like all of our top players were all on the bench and we, we played the maddest team I've ever seen. And we gave, we did a great game ultimately, but it was like not like an expansive game, it was like we, we, got, beat, we got beat 1 0 and it was just shit. Ultimately, um, but it was like I hope the greatest moment was Colo just basically had Ronaldo in his pocket all game long, which was the the, the only consolation we got from that match, which was fuck all. Uh, and I got a video of Paul Scholes with us singing yeah, Ginger Man Twat Adam, which is still the biggest video on Red Men's <laughs> channel. So like nine hundred thousand views from the fucking top of the bear about on the fucking Andy Campbell. Um, that was the few good things, the few good things to come with that. But for us, and looking at our group as well. Last six, if we, I'd like you to get out the group. I want to see us in the last sixteen because once you get there, anything can happen. Now, that, a, that's Champions League for me. Is that bit? This bit feels like fucking purgatory a little bit. It's not anything. Yeah, for us, it's no less so because we've had more a bit more of the Europa League in recent years than you have, which is genuine purgatory, which is just just uh, fox everything. Uh, Football's a Saturday sport, isn't it? It's not a Sunday sport. It's it's that not a newspaper. I don't, I, yeah, no. I don't even <laughs> I don't even mind footy on a Sunday so much, but it's the it's just half five kickoffs on a Thursday, and you're playing. The logic should follow, and this is why I can't wait to watch Arsenal this season in the Europa League because they've got no idea. Because they've got no idea. No. You've had a little sniff of it a couple of times in well, the last yeah, few years. We dumped out of the group a few times as well, and, and they they will think that Europa League footy because all the teams are lower quality they're going to piss it and it's dead hard to piss it because it's like and because we've just won it they'll be like mm, obviously and we got the final the info. Everyone, they'll think it's so doable it's so within their, their reach and this it should be they should absolutely be winning the Europa it's League it's a mentality this season. if they have the attitude because look you've, you've fucking been in the Champions League for 20 years consistently but have you been close to winning it apart from that once no you fucking haven't yeah. so why don't you go in a competition and go and win a competition? I don't think their attitude's correct. And, but the Mine thing, wasn't, though. I'm no, not hypocrite. No, it's because I fucking hated absolutely it. Absolutely true. Like, I hated it. I hated it until we got to, until we played Juice. Pretty much like you mean. That ended up being amazing, of course. For us, of course. Um, but don't, the, know, don't know what you're talking about. Yeah, sure. Sure, sure. <laughs> um, but yeah. Um, but yeah, the, the, the thing is, in the group stage, it's like the third round of the FA Cup for three months. Yeah. Where you come up against these teams and it's the biggest night in their entire careers and they go up there to hurt you and frustrate you or they defend for their lives. You know, they park the bus, they get 10 men behind the ball and you've either got to break it down or you've got to do something. And it, it's just horrible. It's horrible, it's horrible, urgent, horrible. Exactly. And you end up with so many of these things. You can't even get fired up for it because even if you get you go out on the piss and you go to the pub and you watch it, even if you win, you can't celebrate because you're just beating a bunch of fucking no marks that Bar you've never. Farmers, 
Farmer Sean. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, <laughs> uh, you're just beating a team that you know you're much better than. So you can't. It's like, well, you don't celebrate when you beat this the fucking the the, the giant killer and favourites in the third round. You don't celebrate knocking knocking Ketter in. Uh, yeah, exactly. You know, <laughs> you just not. You just basically just walk the wipe the floor with Forest Green. You don't go to town after doing that. You go home and you get on and you prepare for the next game. Thank God, God we got through that. So you can't win in the Europa League, and that's why, I, yeah, that's why it's going to be. Um, I thought we were making a massive mistake us last season because we clearly found the league in, and that's led to United being six. Because actually, if we'd have pushed in those final games, I actually think we'd have got fourth on our own merit. We could have done at one point until we then lose to City, we lose to Arsenal, we lose to Tottenham, and now our record is slightly skewed because you go, oh, United lost X amount of games against the top six. Yeah, but we. It's no mitigation, is it? But we clearly phoned it in from a certain point and decided that Europa was... And I wasn't in agreement with it because I, I thought this is a big poker It's game. exactly what we did the season before. We, we started playing um, fucking Jordan Ive and Shea Ojo on the wings. You know what I mean? Like in, in Premier League games, we played a shadow team for that. We called it the B team. That was what we used to play in the Premier League was the B team for the last six games of the season or whatever. It was a piss take. But we gambled, we, like you did, we gambled on winning it and it never it never come off. But that's the thing for Liverpool now is that there's no more... With it, like Jürgen Klopp said it, this, and that's why we were so excited and so happy with beating Hoffenheim. The way we did it as well helped because it was a fucking great performance and the scoring goals was amazing. Uh, but the it was something to be celebrated because that was the aim. We finally got there. We couldn't we couldn't be excited about getting back into it in the summer because you knew you had this game hanging over your head and the fact that we played so well as well meant that you know if you, if we if we'd eked into the top four and then we'd scrape through the playoff round. You'd be shitting it, whereas now I'm just dead excited about playing Champions League. That's the best yeah, way we you, are. You right have now. had a favourable draw. Your draw and our draw was pretty good. For about 10 minutes, I thought United had drawn Celtic. And I was fucking buzzing. I really wanted Celtic, I really. There's a couple of teams that. To be honest, I wanted Spurs' group, if I'm honest. I wanted us to have the hardest possible group because we're boss against really good teams. And, uh, and I, wanted, I wanted all those big games to have. It. I wanted Dortmund. Well, uh, I was, someone said United have never won it without. Oh, you know, we've never got to like the final or anything like that. Unless we've had a really hard group, everyone who wins it gets an hard group, and it's like mm, I need a bit more research than that. I'm, <laughs> to, I'm not just yeah. going to take your word. That, for that. feels like, like yeah, that feels like an urban myth. Like, like, I know in '99 we had an hard group. I can't remember who our group was in well, in '08. In 2000. 2005, obviously, we, we scraped through in the end, and like we it, it was something like Olympiacos went on to win the, the Greek League, Chelsea went on to win the the Premier League, Juventus won won the Italian League. And there was another team we played. Oh, Labour, uh, yeah, one basically one. loads of like champions elect. We've been telling the way, and we kind of did something similar for the UEFA Cup in two thousand and one. But fuck the groups, just get out the groups, you know. And then, and then worry about beating. You know what's mad is when I was when I was a kid, those Champions League group games. It was the hardest thing ever. They was like, oh my god, this is Homebed from Hungary. Oh, you got to watch out for these. <laughs> and every single group game, it would be difficult, and it would be our best team. And in the recent years. There's been a fourth and because you don't only really need ten points. The fourth and fifth group game is phoned in. You see youngsters getting debuts in them, and on a regular, regular basis, and you just think that's the shift. It's the group stage has now become the fucking league cup to an extent, where you see players getting blooded. But the the meat and veg of it is that last sixteen is there's there's top dogs in that. That that's the thing, and that, the, the the good thing about it is that. And you, 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 I think you're right to some extent, but I mean, again, compared to the Europa League, it's like being in the promised land. Oh, it's good music. I know you're going to have your experience of it in the cup with all your flags and shit, and we're going to have the experience of it. I like it when it's that cold night, you've got to have a bit of a coat yeah. on. And I, I just miss games that matter, because I, 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 it's, it's too stressful. For, for all your games that matter to come right at the end of the season because you're not prepared for it. I like the idea of having games that you've got to win. Yeah, you don't enjoy those winnings. As much as you can look back fondly when you're in them, it's just fucking hell. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> so this is it. I, I'm, I'm, I'm buzzing, bro. I think Liverpool could have a really good, really good season, P- probably by our own recent standards, definitely. And hopefully, a bit of luck here and there, you know, if we can... I still don't know who we're signing. If we get a couple more players in, just to give a bit more cover, because... Yeah, we need to sort the defence out. If that gets sorted, hey, amazing. But we, what Liverpool, I think, would looks like we're doubling down on is being able to replicate what we do as much as possible. So where we fell last season was Mane goes at that team. We haven't got anyone remotely like him. It changes our style of play completely. We brought Salah in, but we started playing both of them in the same team. So now if you lose one, you've got to change how you play. We get, we can get another guy like that. And they'll talk about being on my way. I don't know. But you know, if we can, if we can 
just keep what we do, keep doing what we do for more games, I think we could have a, a, a really good season. Who's winning the league? It's probably News or City. Right, let's talk about that bald man. Don't he look tweaked out to you? Yeah, I, there was that weird thing when he uh, was full time. Uh, was, was it was it the Everton game or was it? Yeah, when he was running, he was running around for like weeks. I like Pep. I'll be honest. I, will, I know, I know. You, you just have got to hate him. Um, for all the all that, and all that like, but uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> but, uh, but you know, you've got, you've got, you've got to hate him because uh, you, you're not allowed to like him. Like, but I, I like him. I, 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 I just do. You know what annoys me is City fans. City fans have had a discernible, discernible style of play for 13 fucking months and now think they're the authority and our football should be fucking Yeah, played. well, you know, it's fun. And it's not even interesting. Pass it, it around your centre half and. If it works, it's great. We get to watch it with some, some interesting footy, uh, you know, and if it doesn't work, we get to laugh on spectacular failing. I think if company gets out for any length of time, they're fucked. 100%. Like, proper fucked. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so I'm praying for that because it's. Pretty regular, it happens, isn't it? To be fair. Yeah, yeah, no, that, that would be that would be. Yeah, that, I think that's on the cards, isn't it? I think the fact that they, they, they think they'll get through a season with 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 them is mental. I think that goes for Lyle and Daniel Sturridge. It's just not gonna, oh, it's not I, think, I think Sturridge is a genuine world class player. Many fifth, many fifth, yeah. more than five games in a run, and he's never fifty five games. <laughs> no, I can't, can't do this here. <laughs> Uh, I, I'm excited. I'm yeah. excited because I think it's fucking wide open. Because I think with the signings that Chelsea are talking about these last couple of days, yeah, you know what's going to be most exciting about this season? I think from this might be the first season in a few, in a while where you are capable of going toe to toe in the big games, and I think you will. Like Mourinho, kind of he's very similar to Ferguson, and or late Ferguson, early Ferguson. I think he'd go toe to toe with late Ferguson. He'd go. And that was I don't need to win. Of early Ferguson, yeah, I don't. I don't need to win this game. I need to. I'll, I'll take a draw, and if we snatch it, hey, I don't. I look amazing. I think Mourinho's got what it takes this season. The players there to go, like I like to come to Anfield and go. We'll give you a game, and I, I would be really excited to watch us play use this year if both teams go. Hell for leather to try and beat it. That could be one of the best games of football. I still don't think you're going to get Mourinho allowing it to go hell for leather, but I do think he, he'll come with a strategy to win the game. I think that's different from Parker because that Parker the bus thing. He, he literally he did do it against you guys. Can't deny that. Yeah, sure. However, we did try and counter. Well, it just didn't work. But we we tried to do it at Old Trafford as well. Yeah, exactly, play. which no one talks about. Um, we did it against. We did it against you guys. Who else did we do it against? We didn't do it against Chelsea. We just got fucking annihilated inside like three minutes. We didn't do it there. We didn't even do it in those latter stage games when we was playing the, the youngsters and that. Like it was such a myth that he was parking the bus. He, was, he wasn't getting results, but that's not the same as parking the bus. Yeah. Well, he, he had to be pragmatic, didn't he? Because he didn't have the goals in that well, team. Well, either, anyway. We had the chances though, because that was the, we was creating just just a bit less chances than you. I think you were top of the league for chance creation. We was converting at just less than uh, look, taking just less shots than Spurs. They were top of it, yeah, but our conversion rate was down with what? Oh, absolutely! Listen, I've heard it all. I mean, we've been, we've done all these things to try and justify it? seasons over the I'm years. I'm not justifying it. We finished where we finished. Of course, yeah. But um, you think no, there wasn't a massive overhaul in the side needed. It was we got to be more clinical. It's li- literally that, and I find it fascinating that just bringing in Lukaku. It's not just Lukaku. I think it's the that extra dimension of movement that he offers. Because I think movement is the key. When teams are just sitting completely blocking in and saying, this is what we are doing, we ain't going anywhere. I definitely think that that extra dimension allows space for other people. And I think that's where United have picked up some goals and I expect Pogba with the pre-season to do well. He's, I've got him down as my player of the year, Pogba. I think he's good. this is going to be his season because, yeah, look, he, yeah, unfortunately, but mainly now, it's crazy now to think of it like his price tag doesn't seem that big now, 12 months on. But um, that it was a massive millstone last year. I think for the price, for that kind of fee, you should be buying a centre forward who scores thirty goals. That that was the problem with, with the Pogba thing. So got Lukaku. <laughs> but this is but that's the thing. But that's fine. That's why it's going to be fine this season. No one gives a shit about the price tag anymore, and he's just going to be a, a little bit free to do what he and does. Even, even Lukaku's fee, no one gives a flying fuck about that. No, no, no one's, one's mentioning it. No one's going to pay for him. They're not mentioning it at the moment. Like everyone's just going, "Oh, what a good signing!" Well, and the fact the fact is he come in and scored on his debut, which helps. Once you just get a nice score against Real Madrid. Only supposed to get the smaller teams apart. <laughs> on a, we we'll touch on this quick because we've done quite a lot on there, and I think we've got about fifteen minutes on the other bit. If that if that works, I don't know. But um, we um, so I'm have to do another intro. <laughs> if if we um, I don't know what I was going to say Real Madrid. 
Who's going to take that Champions League off them if anyone this season? Because three, two on a bounce is never done. It's fucking three on a bounce. Um, because they're pretty good, aren't they? It would be fucking hilarious if it was PSG. You know what I mean? Like if they if they literally bought the Champions League by buying by buying Neymar, like. But uh, I'm Mbappe. And yeah, if that's all, if that's all. Like yeah, is what it is. Like yeah, I don't know. I, I'll be honest. I. I I've switched off to European footy because I've had no need to look at the top end of European football. Well, like, now we're back in exactly. It. So that's it. All of a sudden, <laughs> I have had no interest in Champions League footy. Fucking fucking is shit competition anyway. Uh, now I'm gonna I'm gonna stop paying more attention to these things. But uh, Real Madrid do look. It don't they? You know. Really drew two all this weekend. But, if, but, one but don't but don't yeah. But don't forget though. Like Barcelona should have been waltzing to this for the last three seasons you know what I mean so and inevitably you hit a wall and someone, someone develops a tactic to, to go against you uh, that, that's why I, I don't know I, I, I would I'm, in, I'm just interested to see how Liverpool handle the Champions League I'm not saying we're probably going to win it because I'd be ludicrous it'd be absolutely ludicrous to say something I don't think any of the English teams are at a completed stage everyone is building the, everyone is transitioning the only thing that I say that we, that we have that's why I'm more I'm just more interested than, than, than more there's no expectation on it is a game because we've been we've done so well the only thing that we've absolutely gotten right in the last two years is those those games against big one off or you know kind of occasions and stuff and Strange that's things what happen. well exactly and I, 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 if we if we start getting those big teams I think Klopp lives for it and our best players and our best way of football you want to lose the final Absolutely, yeah. Get to the final. We need to get out the. We need to get. Well, get out the hammers. That's what time we broke that cycle. Like, that's the Liverpool, the Liverpool way of doing things. The Liverpool and German way of doing things is not look a losing penalty shoot though. Um, but yeah, you know that, that. I just like I say, it'd be, it'd be great to see a team do something like that. That's why I thought Leicester would do well last year because I thought they had. A, I thought they'd do well. they do. I thought they were set up to, to to do it. I think we might we might have a a way of playing quite quite well in Europe. I think we'll go and play some exciting footy, not a typical European style of like you know like the Mourinho Rafa. Park the bus and look to nick it on away goals, kind of yeah, shape. Not. We're just going to go fucking windmilling into the Champions League and see what happens. Well, that's why United it was a bit of a, you know, a persistent force in the, you know, the late stages of the Champions League for so long. It was because we didn't take a backward step. We just was like, hey, this is how we win in England, this is how we're going to win in Europe. Yeah. And the time that we, we sort of didn't have that sort of effect was when we tried to replicate people's European style. Bring in Verón, bring in Van Nistelrooy, play four five one. It's mad how it changed. Blah. It's mad how it all changed. I was playing. I went back to look at football managers two thousand and seven, uh, maybe two thousand and six, and I was looking at Liverpool's squad. Like two thousand two thousand six, two thousand seven, because we got to the final that year in in in, in real life, and um, we our squad. I was like, we had about thirteen players. It was like we we got to the Champions League final that season, finished like third or something in the league, third or fourth. Like, how the f- we could not possibly do that now. That squad of players could not do that now because it's just everything so much more competitive. We just think you could, you could have, you didn't need to rotate as much 50, 10 fucking well, plus years ago. Like, if man. people have done studies on the intensity of Premier League football, if you go and watch, like, uh, cause I'm going to do some historical performance analysis, and I think one game that's really interesting to do is the 68 European Cup final against Benfica, and the amount of time spent walking with the ball with the players. You just like, there's no time for that no more. There is no time. You've got to be such a low power level of athlete to be able to get up and down and perform Brilliant. the skills and the actions at the other end of the box. It's such another level of intensity. I think English football will get back to that top stage again because of how competitive the Premier League is. It just needs a couple to level up. Got, there's like a 10-year period where there was 10 English teams, 9 English teams in the Champions League final. And it just seems that all of us went through this transition at the same time, apart from Arsenal. And they've just well, not been just, able to You evolve. know, it's fucking Chelsea and City's fault, mate, because if they just fucking not come into loads of money, us, yous, and Arsenal would be able to just concentrate on what we wanted to concentrate. Not have to stress about finishing in the fucking top four. <laughs> not have to have seven way battles for fucking for for just the privilege of playing in a fucking decent competition in Europe the next season. We could spend what we want. We'd have more of a domination. Can you imagine Real Madrid and Barcelona fans be wondering if they can get into the top four of their league to play in this. Thing. They they've got they'll never understand the fucking stress I went through last season with three <laughs> games to go. We're going away to fucking we're going away to Stoke. And we play a fucking random team because Firmino and Coutinho can't start. And we start a fucking 16-year-old kid up front. 
and we go one nil down, and we have to fucking bring on all the best players to, fight, to to bring it back in the second half, and they'll never understand the stress of playing Middlesbrough on the last game <laughs> of the season and needing to fucking win just to and make it being sure a problem. It's why, why can't you beat these five nil? <laughs> They'll never know. They'll never know. Staying out, you know what? Fucking for it. <laughs> Fuck them. I hope they do. I hope the money, I hope the, the bubble burst. They spread out the TV money again in Spain, and then Deportivo and Valencia come back with a bang, and all of a sudden you've got five teams fighting. But for that's it as four. well because they negotiate their own TV rights. And who's watching La Liga if it's not for Barcelona or Real Madrid? So they get like two hundred and fifty million, and they're like, "Who are you? I bar." Hang on. We'll just check my well, pocket. Well, it's true. That's why, I mean, ultimately, that's why you look at the, the, the different title contenders. And again, there'll be a younger generation who don't remember. Like, the last time there was a, con- a team that contended, you had, you had Deportivo and Valencia. And since then, obviously, Atleti have come back in and... and They've done it amazingly. Be, exactly. But they're, like, they're the exception rather than the, the real in this regard. But, like, Sevilla will never win the La Liga. They'll never get anywhere near it. And then, you know, past there, you get a couple of teams that have a little sniff in it. Villarreal get up there periodically. But Villarreal are not going to finish second, let alone fucking first. But Everton think. could finish top three with a good run and a striker. You know, there's there's literally there's literally five teams that have got a, a consideration to be in the mixer this season. Yeah. Six if you include Arsenal, and I don't. But there's at least five teams that have got to be in contention for doing something. Yeah. And that's the fucking stress. That's why you know, we laugh at the likes of Scottish League and stuff like that. Because, you know, of course, yeah. of fucking course, of course Scott Sinclair looks like fucking Messi. <laughs> like, of course. It's like the standard of that whole league. I mean, the top half of La Liga would be the top, you know, the top, sorry, the top three or four of La Liga would be in the top five or six of the Premier League without a shadow of a doubt. But that seven to 20 would probably struggle in the championship. I said this before, the championship is the best second league in all of football. Because oh, the amount of teams that are in there and the quality, the quality of them. That's the thing, the thing about the thing, the problem with it and, uh, is it's not so much a race for the title anymore, it's a race to not finish fifth for the top teams. Or the, you know, and that's the problem is, all you're really doing when you're winning the league is putting distance between you and fifth. And to the point where eventually you're in a title run, but it's just so you can stop being arsed about fifth and sixth, which are just looming. It's like those Top Gear challenges when they'd have a shit car following them along in case their car died. That's what that's what the Europa League is. That the Europa League is just creeping around every corner, and you just want to get enough distance away from it so you can fucking focus on the fucking title. But that's generally what the fourth body's become, unfortunately. It's a shame because. Uh... Back in the day, in the early 90s, the UEFA Cup and the Cup Winners' Cup were great competitions to win. Now there's too many fucking games in it. And that's where, if they reduce, they're never going to reduce the games. Less games is less money. But if they reduce the amount of games, you might be like, oh, fuck it, let's go and have a go. Nightmare. Anyway, thank you, Paul, very much. This has been fantastic. You're probably not going to walk go, but if you are a Liverpool fan and you're on here and you've not checked out Redman, then please go check him out. Well, check out check out Mates TV. I do some general footy yeah, stuff. Yeah, go on check there, out his own one and his retro TV, his retro football gaming one as well, because that's fucking awesome. Uh, and give Ball Street a follow as well, because he's on there pretty regular. And um, thank you guys for watching. Subscribe. Uh, what day we're we on? This is Monday. the The analysis from this weekend is probably going to be Wednesday, because that's the first day I forget this week. So uh, check it out on Wednesday. Thanks for tuning in. See you in a bit.